Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Akit, and uh, I'm really grateful to Kiran uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk at the React Bangalore meetup. So my topic for today is um, incremental static regeneration and uh, using Next.js. And before we dive into it, uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm currently working as an engineering manager at Proximity Labs. Uh, a little bit about Proximity Labs. Uh, we are a global team of coders. Uh, we love open source and uh, we are all uh, working from home at the moment. Um, we have open positions for senior full stack engineers. So after this talk, please feel free to uh, reach out to us. Um, all right. So specifically when we are talking about uh, you know, deploying a React application. The type of problems I deal with daily are highly related to scale and performance. So these are two things that I have to take care of. Um, so many people are working on, you know, side projects and uh, React applications, which are maybe used by hundreds to thousands of users a day. I'm talking about um, thousands of users per minute. So I'm talking about scale from there and above. So now the type of problems that you are trying to solve change. Uh, and keeping that in mind, that is the base, the, the fundamental that I want you to keep in mind when I'm talking about uh, all of the things that um, come into picture when you have to take care of performance as well as uh, costs and at scale. So let's just do a brief overview of what are the different ways we can currently deploy a React application. Again, uh, there are a lot more. I'm keeping it quite straightforward and simple. Uh, I want to make this a little uh, beginner friendly talk. So uh, first is uh, static deployment. I think um, from three to four years ago, a lot of people have been introduced to uh, React from Create React App. And it was the easiest way to um, start developing a React application. And uh, building that application was quite straightforward. Um, even if you would have your own uh, custom Webpack setup, it would essentially bundle out a static bundle and you would host that wherever you could statically host a website. So uh, that really changed the way people thought about static bundling and it led to the whole Jamstack revolution. But at the core, you were building one static bundle and you were deploying it and all of the data that you had to view on your pages would actually come from API calls, which the client was making. So either it was hard coded in the HTML was already uh, pre rendered or it was coming in from API calls, which your client was making. Now, of course, there were some pros and there were some cons. Uh, biggest of them being key SEO wasn't so great. The bundle, entire bundle was needed. You would get the snappy app like experience when it was shipped, but otherwise uh, there were uh, other uh, major issues when it came to uh, search engine optimization. So then uh, enter static site generation. And uh, one of the huge uh, communities which has done a lot for static site generation is Gatsby. So Gatsby entered and they really uh, liked the concept of uh, what was happening um, with React, but they said, let's take it to the next level. And their target audience was um, news websites or uh, media websites, you know, like uh, say People Magazine or BBC. And what they were trying to point out was that you have thousands of pages. So if you were to make your, uh, if you were to build your website statically, you could actually get better performance scores and you could get better search engine results. So to do this, um, they said, we'll call the APIs at build time and we'll render the pages and keep them ready. And Following the same thought process, even we have another very popular library, which is the one that I'm going to be talking about more, which is Next.js. And so uh, this really caught on, right? The, the concept of static site generation and people started really loving it. 
but there were fundamental issues that people had not thought of at that point in time because no one had actually implemented it at scale which started surfacing about a year into uh, you know people actually adopting it for uh, production um, i have to mention uh, this third aspect of deploying react application which is server side rendered applications so uh, what do we mean by server side rendered uh, essentially we are talking about implementing some code or implementing the data fetching on the server and then rendering the html and then serving that to the uh, client now this actually mimics uh, the old way that we used to do web development right so if if you are from a php era you will remember that you had to our, our wordpress even you had to have the server and you needed to uh, have the code um, render i mean the html render on the server and then it was uh, sent to the client so we're going to just take a short look at how each one of these uh, works in uh, next js and we'll start with server side rendering all right so the core of next js for those people who haven't worked with next js uh, before the core of next js is it is a framework built on top of react and uh, it has some opinions of its own one major one being routing so the routing in next js is file based routing so it, you don't have a client based router like react router dom which you would generally have in uh, an application like uh, if you built it using create react app but you have a uh, uh, file based routing system so you need to follow a certain uh, system of how you name your files and where you keep them and based on that your routes are built now uh, the most of uh, react is as is but there are some special life cycle methods which are introduced by nextjs which give us some superpowers uh, which help us with all of our performance and um, you know seo needs so let's talk about server side rendering first we have a uh, function provided by nextjs called get server side props those who have already used it know what it does it allows you to actually run code on the server it will go and fetch the data it will pre render your page so there is my uh, function for my page and it will whatever data it receives from an api it could be a headless cms it could be um, an api which requires some different sort of authorization and hence you are uh, triggering it from the server and not from the client so all of that is made available through props to the page and this actually runs every single time you request the page so this is the same way things would run uh, back when you know uh, we were building vanilla php websites and they have specific use cases but they don't cover most of the use cases so we'll see what most of the use cases are like now there's another uh, very similar sounding function or life cycle method that's been made available to us it's called get static props get static props even before i speak about it i would like to speak about what do most websites actually look like so let's actually take a look all right uh, we we'll, we we'll look at two uh, types of websites so one is twitter.com and what twitter is essentially showing me is content which is user specific so all of the content that i am going to see on the screen now is very specific to uh, the user that's logged in if i'm not logged in i see this generic login page that's it so a uh, note that uh, whether server side rendered or client side rendered just keep in mind this thought process that i needed credentials of the user i needed some information of who is trying to access the page and then the page actually rendered differently for that person so this is one very large domain of websites right social media networks uh, instagram facebook all of them fall under this category and then we have uh, content distribution uh, websites 
So uh, I have on my screen right now BBC.com. So you could have a, a People magazine or uh, you know Verge, uh, and all of these are essentially uh, spewing content by the R, right? They are literally every R they're adding. Um, about 20 to 30 articles on their website. And so across a day, they're growing by 500 different articles and every article, so I'm just clicking on a link, every article has its own page. So that means um, the website is actually growing by 500 pages, right? In a way, in a matter of speaking, right? Uh, if this were entirely statically rendered. So if the entire website was statically rendered, the website is actually growing constantly, like on, on a hourly basis. Now, how do you actually create something like this? So keep with this kind of uh, thought process in mind, at scale, how do you counter these sort of issues? Let's come and understand what get static props is. Uh, again, most of you might know it. This is for those who are uh, coming from a non Next.js background. So get static props allows you to. Hello. Yeah. Get static props allows you to uh, fetch some data and render your page beforehand. But it stores the page statically rendered. That means it is served to your client, to your browser as HTML and CSS, you know, in a manner of speaking. And neither is there a request being made for data on the uh, client, neither is there a request being made for data on the server. So because no one's making a request for data, you get a very fast experience. You're just going to a uh, URL and it, you're being served the rendered HTML and CSS, all right? So now uh, with this background, um, we have we run into some problems when we are talking about scale. So this, this lovely uh, comparison um, done on CSS tricks of the build times with different site generators, uh, it's a little old, but it will give you an idea that as the number of files that you need to build increase, the build time goes up. And if you are adding hundreds to thousands of pages to your website daily, how do you actually counter this problem? Because your build time is going to keep going up. Even if you have a machine, which you specially uh, you know, have for just building and deploying your website, and you have millions of pages, so. Just to give you an example, uh, BBC has about uh, 25 million pages, uh, which are accessed quite actively. And it has an archive, which is much bigger than uh, 30 million pages. So just to put things in perspective, the build times are in hours. And you cannot take that much time to actually build your website because by then you would have actually written more content and you would want to redeploy that. So uh, around April last year, uh, Next.js announced something quite revolutionary. They announced static generation at scale, uh, which they like to rename incremental static regeneration. And what they're essentially saying is they can infinitely generate and pre-render new pages. So, uh, I mean, this is their official blog post from July when it became stable, where they're saying Next.js can statically pre-render an infinite number of pages this way on demand. Uh, now, this is kind of uh, fascinating. Let's actually see how this happens. Uh, they have an example. Uh, let me see if I have popped it open. Yeah, all right. I, they have an example running over here. And uh, what they've done is they, there's a GitHub issue over here. And on this GitHub issue, you have uh, people who have uh, reacted to this comment and they're taking those comments and they're showing it on this page. I'm just going to comment on this page as well. So I've changed uh, a certain comment. Now the smiley faces are uh, 344, uh, 343. If I duplicate this page, right, it's going to just re-render. 
what i have been served is the cached version of this page all right but every page has a life of 1 second i'm going to just reload the page now let me just yeah all right i just i guess get up took a little bit of time to reflect that change so i'm reloading the page and now you're seeing the number has changed as well but if you also noticed i first saw the number 342 on page and then i saw 343 um what happened i was served the old statically generated page so i got a very quick user experience on top of that it went and checked so it's using um, what we call uh, stale um, i mean it revalidates when it consider, considers it to be stale and we can define a timeout to for when the cache should be considered stale and this particular page has been defined a timeout of just 1 second so for that purpose it actually went and checked is there new information and when it did find new information it rendered that new information on the back end it statically cached that page as well and it served it to us uh let me show you one more example just to get an idea of how amazing this is so all that example actually happens to be here all right so i'm going to just uh, head to this page it's static hyphen tweet dot now uh, dot sh and it's followed by tweet id and if you saw that this page was instantly shown to me um what you are seeing is uh, there is no embedded uh, tweet here so if i refresh this page it, it's literally served instantly uh the tweet is in line with my html so i can actually inspect this and see that the tweet is uh, full completely there with my html and if i check my network tab and i check all of the requests that were made there was no request made there was no fetch made from my uh, client side which was actually going and getting data now if i were to take a tweet id which did not exist this is where the entire uh situation comes together if i were to take a tweet id which did not exist so i'm just going to randomly fetch a new tweet all right i'll just copy this tweet id over and i'm going to paste it over here okay so i'm heading to a page which both you and me know that there is a fairly recent tweet it is not available it is not statically cached and generated beforehand what we are presented with is a loading screen i don't know how many of you saw that but for a very brief second there was a loading screen so there is a fallback that is shown for those pages which are not generated which is a loading screen and then you are able to actually see the statically generated page so this is what they mean by infinitely dynamic static generated pages so let's get into a little bit about how this is actually happening so there are two more components to uh the methods that we are talking about already one of them is get static paths get static paths is used whenever you have dynamic paths so let me just show you an example of what get static paths looks like like i told you before the routing is based on the name so rather than having a slash posts and a slash um say you know 1 to 3 js which would render as um, your domain slash post slash 1 to 3 um you can actually have a uh, slug over there so the slug will change over time and based on that slug you can actually get our query information and so you can add a get static uh, static paths method over here to help you with um 
defining exactly which pages should be rendered but additionally it has a fallback option uh, configuration option that you can pass in as well which if you pass in it to be true then what happens is it calls this it revalidates this live behind the scenes and it allows you to show a placeholder so you get access to this placeholder by using the use router from next and use router exposes uh, a is fallback boolean so you know that oh this page hasn't been rendered isn't statically available but no problem it's fetching it in the back end and in the meantime you can show a loader and that's exactly what we saw right so uh i just want to talk about one more uh, item of how you can actually implement uh, incremental static regeneration and again just want to kind of drive this point home of what exactly it is so if you've understood the concept of what static generation is static generation is at build time we are going and fetching data and we are creating our uh, static html and keeping it ready so that we get these really performant websites they get served really quickly and they are very search engine friendly at the same time uh, incremental static regeneration is if that page did not exist we will go and make it ready and keep it cached right so now um the get static props which we spoke about earlier also exposes one additional configuration option which is revalidate so revalidate allows us to set in number of seconds when the page is considered stale now uh, let me just draw you a picture of where this would actually make a difference let's see if the bbc website actually has this yeah okay this is actually a perfect page uh, to take as an example now what you can see on the right hand side is top stories what you see on the left is the uh, post itself now there's two things over here which trouble a lot of people who build static websites so uh, this is a ideal case to build a static website you want uh, your search results to come on top when someone is searching for a uh, relevant news item and uh, to make make sure it, it is on top google is uh, from march 2021 google is taking into consideration the performance scores as well when they're uh, doing your ranking and for that reason you need to have good performance scores and it's like a no brainer you should have a statically rendered site that being said while you can statically render most of the content on this page which is the uh, core information what about components like this so you have a top stories component and the top stories by literally by its name has to be updated frequently uh there's two ways to do this this component does not need to be statically rendered right this component can actually make the call from the client get the most recent top stories and then populate it over here so while the person is actually reading the rest of the data and api call separately is done at scale what happens is this puts a load on the server so when thousands of people are accessing this page simultaneously thousands of api calls are being made to the database i'm talking about per minute how can you prevent thousands of calls going so you can statically render this content as well by making sure that you add that into the data that you're calling inside your uh, and serving inside the get static props function and then you can set a revalidate to a uh, 1000 milliseconds or uh, 600 milliseconds so it's about a minute long so for a minute you have stale data on the website but that's not bad because a thousand people are looking at top stories and this widget or this component is just showing you data which is only a minute old so if you have literally a story if if let's say this um, component was populated by um, information based on 
uh, the last updated, uh, the last posted story, then you would immediately post a story and it would immediately reflect over here to the person who would access the website a minute later, right? And that website would have been served statically. So uh, do remember this, the first person visiting that website when it's stale, he would get a old version, but there would be a background request to check if there's something new and then the new one would be saved, right? Uh, when you implement this at scale, the cost savings are magnanimous. Like I cannot even go to, uh, I mean, we, we are helping companies out with problems like these. So it's, it's about a uh, 30 to 35 X decrease in server and backend costs, right? And their running costs because of their daily active users are already high. So you can already imagine how uh, that has an impact. All right. So coming back, um, this was my little lightning talk on uh, incremental uh, static regeneration, but I think they missed out a, an opportunity. They should have called it uh, infinite dynamic static site generation because I just think that drives the point home much better. Okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please do ask. Um, Sorry, there was no live code, uh, some technical glitch at my end. So I wasn't able to present a live working version, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If anyone has any questions, do go ahead. Uh, hi, Sakitna, nice talk. Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm just uh, I'm just looking at uh, YouTube uh, if there are any questions. All right. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, in the meantime, I would just like to say that uh, Proximity is searching for senior full stack developers. If you have uh, and designers, um, senior product designers. So if you have uh, five years experience plus and you like working with uh, relatively uh, modern stacks uh, drop your resume to me or just ping me 